um, trying to explain how the observation you can see on screen at the moment is possible on a flat Earth. Uh, it's not possible on a flat Earth, and I would take, I, I'm prepared to spend some time uh, trying to explain to you exactly why that is, which is that this image is impossible to take if the Earth is flat. Refraction of light. As it passes from more dense to less dense mediums, the bending of light as it passes from one medium to another is called refraction. The angle and wavelength at which the light enters a substance and the density of that substance determine how much the light is refracted. What this means for the globe enthusiast is rather simple. The reason we are able to see beyond the geometric sphere radius, in other words we see too far, the light is able to reach and observe it due to the constant skipping it does around Earth's atmosphere. It will naturally migrate towards the round, but due to the sphere shape it is also migrating upwards, so it will go up and down until it reaches your eye or camera. This is called looming. The globe model tells us light bends up, but what if we apply the same principles to a flat plane? In this scenario, the object is seen in the distance without any atmosphere. Then when we start to add a gradient, i.e. we make the air near the ground denser than the air above, we start to see the light bend down. Miles Davis and others have said that images of mountains in the distance that fall out of the calculations for a flat plane are not possible. Let's put that claim to the test. Okay, diddly dokey, you can see that the bubble is dead center of the of the spirit level and we also have the laser on right now on the same piece of wood and it doesn't really matter where I move that to to be honest it's all the same we get the same result we get the original light on the on the lower spot and the return is higher as you can see now it's reflecting back off this box so if I remove the box so now that it's just the, the wall, you can see that the same thing has happened. We've still got the same return and it doesn't really matter even if I use this mirror. Let me show you. I don't know, put a mirror like so, so we've got a, a different angle. As you can see, uh, what we'll do, we'll have a look down here. And you still get a return from it. So. It is what it is, and we'll just have to work with what we've got. There's no sugar or anything in this tank, it's all just tap water, straight from the tap, straight into the tank. And that's what we'll be doing our tests on right now, getting our measurements with no influence, nothing changed in the water, and then we'll start building uh, the density up by applying some sugar solution. Happy days. Okay, so for those of you wanting a measurement for the water currently, there we go, just, just about seven inches, there or thereabouts. So that's the height of the water. Also, if we go to this side, uh, you will see exactly the same, just about seven inches. If you want the dimensions of the of the tank. So the dimensions of the tank are one foot, by three foot, one foot by three foot, seven inches deep, and I'll tell you how much sugar I'm going to pop in now. So currently we have 800 mils, as you can see. 800 mils, we're going to pop that in the bowl. Got some more sugar to add to it, so I'm going to pop that in first. And I'm going to see how much sugar else we've got left at the end of all this. Right, that's 800 mils, and I'll just pop the rest of the sugar in. And 
that's right about 650 mils. There we go. So that's around about 1450 mils of sugar. I'm going to put some boiling water in that now, let it all soak in, and then pop it into the tank. And would you believe it? It's all dissolved into to the bowl. So happy days. I'm going to take that through, pop it in the tank, uh, leave it for about an hour or so, and uh, return to do some more tests. So I've just put the uh, the water in, and you can see things are still bouncing up and down, dancing around. But one thing's for sure, that return light is now lower than the original beam. Mm hmm. As you can see, nothing's changed. And we have a lower return beam. Very interesting. Okay, so this is after an hour. And as you can see, it's pretty much settled to the exact same position that we uh, originally did as soon as we put the water in, except it's not wobbling around right now. So I have marked the areas uh, on there. We've got one and we've got zero, sorry, we've got zero and then one. And you can see that the laser has dropped. As you can see, this is dead centre. We are lined up absolutely central to the to the bottom line. So that's the line that the tank is now settled in, and we have the camera in place. Now I've put, I'm going to put something this inside the tank. We're going to have a little play with some stuff. See if we can uh, get something to to happen with this. Now what's interesting now, you can actually see that the, the top of that object that I've just placed inside the fish tank um, is pretty much um, at the, you know, the line where the refraction starts at the other side, give or take. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something at the other side of that and we're going to see if we can make it drop behind this object in the foreground by changing the, the density of the water. So as you can see I've put a tin of primer at the one side and we've got a tape measure at the other and obviously nothing's changed. So this is the setup with the first set of um, uh, sugared water that went in to the tank now what we're going to do is we're going to put some more sugar solution in and we're going to see what happens when we're looking at the first object and we're going to see what happens to the objects behind it. Okay, so second round, as you can see, we've got 800 mils of sugar and there's that much left in the first bag and we've got another bag here so we're going to use all all of this, I'm going to pop it in the same. So, how much do we have in this one? So, let's give or take, it's around about 200. So, it's about a thousand mils in each. Okay, so I'm going to put the other bag in and I'll put some water in. Yeah, that's one horrible <laughs> solution. Needs a good stir, so I better get on with it. And what do you know? We managed to get it all saturated, so I'm going to pop it in the tank. Okay, so back to the, to the laser. And this is with the additional sugar solution in and it's over there so I'm going to pop the line on and we'll see there where that ends up ok 
Okay, let's switch this off. three results. Okay, so this is after the tank has settled down with the additional um, sugar solution. So this would be the two extra bags of sugar that I put in. So we shall compare the two and see what has happened. These two images were taken in different density gradients. The first image on the left was taken after adding 1450 mL of sugar and 1.5 litres of water to the water already in the fish tank. The second image on the right was taken after an additional 2000 mL of sugar and 1.5 litres of water were added to the fish tank. You can see that the pot I placed in the tank lines up pretty well in both images, and the cumulative effects of the density gradients have not had enough length to make the object move its visual position. However, when you look at the tin of paint in the right hand image in the background you can see that it is sunk in relative position to the pot. This proves that on a flat plane with a density gradient distant objects will fall out of their expected positions and appear lower in the image. This very simple demonstration has proved Miles Davis and Cole wrong and proven that sinking is indeed a very real reason as to why we see things the way we do over our wonderfully flat plane. I've been Ranty Flat Earth, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bonus for the measurements. So, to the actual object that I placed in the tank, we are looking at around about, I'm going to say, eighteen and a half inches. And then 78 inches to the start of the can, 80 and a quarter inches to the white board at the back.